There's like every once in a while I'll crave a steak, usually when I'm on my period. <laughs> oh man, I love working with men and talking about my period all day. It makes them so uncomfortable. Hi, I'm Cara Nicoletti and I am a butcher at Foster Sundry in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Today I am gonna show you how to brine a pork chop two ways, a wet brine and a dry brine, and also how to cook it. First thing, meat is muscle. Muscles are made up of these long fibers, and uh, when we cook meat, those fibers tense up and they squeeze all the moisture out of the meat that we're cooking. The goal in brining is trying to add moisture back into the meat so that it's not lost when it's cooking. It's also meant to help season the meat fully into the muscle. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a wet brine. So all I'm using for this brine is water, kosher salt, brown sugar, and some aromatics. So this is two cups of water. So this is a third of a cup of kosher salt. And a third of a cup of brown sugar. And the sugar is uh, really just for flavoring and it's also gonna help caramelize the outside of the meat. Whole black pepper in, a little bit of dried chili, some sprigs of thyme. Take some garlic cloves. How about three, even though it's not gonna do anything. You can add sugar, you can add aromatics if you want to, but it's actually not really necessary. I think a lot of people think that brining is this chef-y secret thing, but actually all it is is salt water. You're just gonna bring this up to a boil and then immediately turn it off. And I'm gonna add about two cups of ice cubes to it just to cool it down. I think that a lot of times people confuse brining with marinating. So their instinct is that they wanna put something acidic into their brine and you should not do that because the acid will actually start to denature the muscle and cook it and you'll get like a really mushy cut of meat that's not ideal. So right now I'm very gracefully pouring this brine onto this pork chop. Generally this recipe I would be for two chops but it doesn't really matter. The other chop we have here is going to get dry brined. Make sure you seal it up really tight. When you are putting your brined pork chop in the fridge, just be careful how you position the bag because you want the whole thing submerged. So however you have to get that done, get it done. <laughs> and then that's just gonna go in the fridge for at least two hours and up to 24. So now we're gonna do the dry brine, which is really just two tablespoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of brown sugar, packed quarter teaspoon black pepper. So I'm just gonna divide this equally in between both sides. If I'm cooking meat at home, I always dry brine it and I always tell customers that I'm selling meat to to season it at least an hour in advance if they can or just right before. You don't wanna do it in like a weird 20 minute window because after 20 minutes, meat is gonna have all the moisture on the surface because that's when all the salt has pulled all the moisture out. Simple, but it's tricky. You just wanna leave this in your fridge opened, uncovered on a rack for at least two hours and up to two days. More than that, it's gonna kinda of start curing itself. This is your wet brine pork chop and this is your dry brine pork chop before they go into the fridge. Careful that if you have a bone in pork chop doesn't poke the bag like this one just did. You know, be careful out there. I'm gonna put these in a cast iron at 250, super low for like 30 minutes. You're trying to get your chop to around 110, 115, and then we'll pull it and sear it really hard on the induction until it caramelizes on the outside. So in order to get a really good sear, you want a really high temp, you need some kind of oil to do that. So I'm gonna add some neutral oil to this pan and get it super, super hot like ripping hot. So like grapeseed oil, canola oil, vegetable oil are all gonna be neutral and they're also gonna be have a high smoke point, which is good. If you're like searing meat correctly, it honestly should make your house like very smoky, which is not the answer that people want, but it's the answer that I have. <laughs> I have to open my windows every time I cook a steak. So this is the dry brine pork chop. I'm gonna put it in. So I'm cooking the dry brine and the wet brine pork chop in exactly the same way, uh, reverse searing them. But the results are gonna be a little bit different because of the moisture levels on the chop. There's two schools of thought and it's like either just leave your meat there and don't touch it for like four minutes to let it get the good crust on it or flip it every 15 seconds. I do actually think that flipping it more frequently gives it more even crust. You can have a little bit of pinkness inside. You know, obviously you don't want it like red. 
Also, there's a good amount of fat on a pork chop, like on the outside, so <clears throat> you wanna make sure that you uh, pick it up at the end and sear it on the edge, just so that that fat kinda gets crisp and isn't like unrendered, disgusting fat. And then I'm gonna flip it and let it cook so that it gets close to the bone, too. Because close to the bone is um, always the coolest temperature. All right, and now you wanna let it sit and rest before you carve it for like three to five minutes. So you can see on this one, it's not getting the same caramelization as this dry brine, like pretty gray. And that's because the meat is wetter and it's leaching a lot of liquid into the pan. These chops have been resting for about five minutes. They both look delicious, but this one has like a little bit less caramelization on the eye just because there was more liquid on it. To carve them, I'm gonna take them off the bone. Uh, these look great. They don't look dried out. They are still a little bit pink in the middle, which is what we're looking for. So color-wise, you can see that, like, you know, it has that traditional, like, whiteness of pork, but there's still a little bit of pink, and you can also see that it's pretty juicy inside. It doesn't have that, like, desiccated, dry pork thing happening, which is great. I think pork chops do get a bad rap. I think people have, like, a weird, like, 50s housewife association with them. Should we taste them? Mm-hmm. And you can see it's like dripping juice, which is phenomenal. To get the recipes for the dry brine and wet brine pork chop, click the link below.